Organizations today that are looking to be competitive, fast moving, et cetera, know one really important thing, and that is speed to market. What the market is looking for is for organizations to build the fastest, simplest thing that they can that's going to have the highest probability of success. Let's take a look at a forward thinking company, one who's looking to rethink the way that they do innovation, one who's really thought long and hard about not just the kind of architecture they want to put in place, hybrid cloud, but also the way that they want to deploy applications and data. This particular organization has decided that they really want to take full advantage of speed and have as such decided that they are going to deploy all of their critical applications and data sets via containers. They know that there are some applications that they have that are gonna be stateful in nature. We're gonna focus on those, but there'll also be different application stacks that they'll run that may be stateless as well. So as they think about the kind of hybrid cloud architecture that they're looking to deploy, they have to keep in mind that the architecture needs to support the statefulness of the data set, the configuration of the container and the overall architecture of the hybrid cloud platform it's running on, as well as enable for speed and mobility those stateless containers that need to just pop up to do some work and then they can disappear after it's over. Whenever we're talking about stateful containers, one of the things that we have to think about, and there are actually five of them, are just the very first and the simplest service that any stateful container requires, which is the ability to be persistent. So as the container itself lives and breathes, it amasses data as it's processing information and taking inputs from the users that support it. This particular company may do online retailing, for example, and they know that there are certain applications that will benefit from having the persistence by which the information that's stored will be available the next time the application is started. They also know that the data will be placed on the most efficient storage platform within the cluster itself. That it's capable of working with data sets, whether they are stored in block storage, file storage, or in object storage. In other words, is the data structured in nature, that it can be inter intersected with a row and a column? Um, is it file-based? Or is it something that's completely semi or unstructured in nature and has no addressable row and column intersection. All of these kinds of considerations, the container and its persistence needs to be able to maintain. Not just that, but also the configuration of the application itself. So that if the application needs to move from the on-prem location to the cloud, then that consistency, that experience that you're looking to maintain at a consistent way transfers with the application. It could also be in a hybrid cloud manner that the application maybe it runs in the cloud and it's accessing parts of its data set on-prem, some parts in a completely different cloud environment, and maybe some parts in the cloud that the application is running on. This idea of persistence allows the application to know exactly where it was at the last point the user interacted with it. And it has the underlying services that address the storage requirements, whether that's snapshotting, backups, provisioning, expanding, contracting, encrypting, all of the things that a persistent storage container would need to be able to provide for the application that's running in a stateful way. Now, speaking of persistence, the other thing that this particular company needs to keep in mind is resiliency. I mentioned a couple of times that the application may run on-prem, it may run in the cloud, it may run and across multiple clouds, a combination thereof. The ability to provide high availability of the application itself is a component of resiliency. Should the application fail, this approach or these services would allow the application to quickly be restarted to minimize the amount of downtime and to certainly mitigate any data loss. We often refer to that as data breaches. So the notion of resiliency isn't about just the application in the container, it's also about the prevention of breaches of that information. So for example, maybe I typed um, you know, an rm star dot star at the root level of my particular container host. Well, it'd be great if I could get that back without having to reload the application and start all over from scratch and go and try to find that data set itself 
So this notion of being able to be resilient isn't just about the application. It's not just about the data. It's also the resiliency services that are necessary to prevent data loss from accidental activities and to certainly make it so that the application can quickly be restarted so that there's no downtime associated by the end user who's taking full advantage of the application itself. Now, after resiliency, it stands to reason that we also need to be considerate of security. Open up any web browser, go to any news site, and I'm sure you'll find no shortage of stories that are associated with a service that was disrupted by some threat actor or some nefarious state who's trying to do things that they should not be doing. And so the idea of security here is how do we prevent the threat actors from getting into the system to begin with? This is where we take full advantage of services that are baked into the platform that the container is running on to protect the data in the application. In the event that there is some kind of an attack, there's a rapid response that you can put into place. Even before the response, a system that allows you to detect activity that might be occurring on the network that could be indicative of a threat attack itself to correlate that network-related activity with what's happening to the data, especially the relationship between the host and the actual data source itself. For example, if a host has normally been sending data in the clear and all of a sudden it starts encrypting the information, well, that could be one of two things. It could be that we've just changed our security policy and we've turned on host side encryption. It could also mean that the host has been impacted by some kind of a threat that seeks to um, not just maybe encrypt the data, but maybe even to exfiltrate the information itself. Now, correlation becomes critical here. So the ability to ask the other parts of the platform for which this container is running on top of, if they're seeing indicative signs of uh, different kinds of threat activities would allow us to remove the false positives. So the security components here that are protecting the data, snapshotting, backup and recovery, traditional backup and recovery tools are complemented now by the activities that are monitoring and trying to detect, as well as services that allow us to repair any kind of damaged information, automate the response, if you will, of an attack so that the recovery activities follow the defined runbook that you've set forward and they recover in an autonomous fashion or manual if that's the route that you wanna go. All of the services that you see listed right here surrounding this container that I've got drawn in the middle need to be able to follow the container and the underlying data wherever it resides, whether it's on-prem, in the cloud, across clouds, or some combination of all of that. The key to mobility is consistency. Being able to package all of the things up that I just said that are defined as policies that complement the container and the underlying data so that wherever this resides, it has the exact same experience that's delivered in the destination that you're trying to drive it to. Mobility is not just a one-way location or one-way uh, form of transport, if you will. Bidirectional mobility is what's critical here, especially when you're talking about applications that are designed in vehicles that really support a hybrid cloud architecture. That same experience that we might have inside of a public cloud or some kind of cloud hosted location means that the application that I might have up here in the cloud will have all of the same capabilities that we've listed already. The persistence, the actual resiliency, the security, and now the mobility. That bi-directional mobility that we're talking about means that as the application moves from an on-prem environment all the way up to the cloud, it should be able to move in the exact same manner back to the host on-prem. Now that's a really critical concept because the last thing you wanna do is create and develop up in the cloud environment and then be stuck there because you can't get the application out. There happens to be one or two services that are running up there that aren't running on-prem. So when you think about the kind of platform that you want to build this particular container architecture on top of, it needs to be able to run as application stack running on hardware uh, or as a software stack that's running up inside of the cloud itself. So we've talked a lot about what we've done with the container itself. We also wanna make sure that the container has access to the actual storage uh, data sets that it actually needs to use to be successful.
So the last thing that any forward-thinking organization is going to be thinking about is how do I make sure that the applications that I'm running in my container platform have access to all of the data sets that are available to it, that it should have access to, provided to it in a way for which it's been enriched and it's been cataloged, meaning I know where the data is, I know what the data contains, and I know the degrees of relevance and value it has to the organization and this particular application. I can use that cataloging to affect policies, how often it gets backed up, who has access through different kinds of control measures, authentication and authorization considerations could be baked into that. I can set governance and maybe regulatory policies based on data contained within the catalog, such as how good this data is uh, and can be used for, as well as who has access to it. Can it even go to the cloud or does it have to stay on-prem? All of these things really make the overall containerization experience of an application not only consistent, but also more relevant to the organization. It creates higher degrees of accuracy within the application because it has access to all of the data it's supposed to, regardless of where the data is stored in the organization and in the format it may be stored in. Remember, these containers and the applications that they support need to be able to access data that could be stored on block-based systems, on file-based systems, and on object-based systems as well. That notion of creating the experience that's consistent on-prem means that you're going to make specific decisions in your containerized architecture that effectively deploy cloud architectures on-premise to where the storage, the compute, and the networking simply become services that are almost invisible, just like they are in the cloud. They're certainly there. The container needs them, and we can use policies to adjust the kinds of performance requirements that that particular application demands in the container environment requires to support that application experience as we need to within the cluster that we've created. Thank you. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below.